Next up is Coulomb's Law. And here's where we get to the real nitty gritty. Uh, Coulomb's Law is analogous to Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, which is why I wore this shirt today. And it just says that the force between two charged point particles, or it could also be spherically symmetric charges. Um, spherically symmetric means that it's uh, the charges are set up so that no matter which side of the sphere you look at, it looks the same. Um, and we'll call these two charges Q1 and Q2. They are separated by a center to center distance R. R is not necessarily the radius, it's a center to center distance. Uh, and this is an inverse square law, just like Newton's law of universal gravity. They're both inverse square laws, and that simply means that if you double the center to center distance between the, the two charged objects, what does that do to the force between them? Well, inverse square, one over doubling squared is one fourth. It would quarter the force. If you reduce the, the center to center distance to one third of what it was before, what would that do to the force? That would make the force nine times as big because it's an inverse, means one over r squared. So if you third the, full, the, uh, the center center distance, square that and one over it, you get nine times as much force. So this is Coulomb's law right here. This is Coulomb's law right here. And uh, what this means, these, uh, this vector in absolute value signs, that just means this is the magnitude of the force. Whenever you put absolute value signs around the vector, that means the magnitude. And the magnitude of the force is k, where k is the Coulomb constant. That's 8.99 times 10 to the 9. The units are Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. It's about 9.0 times 10 to the 9, uh, which for back of the envelope calculations you can use. Um, but the uh, notice that it's k, this Coulomb constant, times the two charges, q1 times q2, over the center to center distance squared. Now, k, the Coulomb constant, uh, can actually be expressed in terms of a much more fundamental quantity. Uh, Coulomb's law can be expressed in terms of a much more fundamental quantity, and that is this thing right here, uh, epsilon naught. You pronounce that epsilon naught. Uh, it is an epsilon, it's not an E, it's an epsilon, and that sub-zero you just say epsilon naught, that is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 Coulomb squared over Newton's per meter, Newton meter squared rather, that's just the inverse units of the K constant, but epsilon naught uh, has a name, it's called the permittivity of free space. You can express K as one over four pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is much more fundamental. It appears in a lot of different places uh, in the uh, derivation of the speed of light, uh, it appears there, it appears in all of Maxwell's equations. So epsilon naught, much more fundamental constant. You can use 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, or you can use k. So you can write Coulomb's law in terms of epsilon naught like this. The absolute value or the magnitude of the force, the electric force, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. That whole thing right there is just the Coulomb constant times q1, q2 over r squared. Now, the vector form of this, it's really the same thing, but we want to, this is a vector, so we want to emphasize that. If you want to express this as a vector like this, then we need a directional uh, added on there. So same magnitude, but we express the direction as r hat, where r hat is just a unit vector directed along the line connecting the centers of the charges. If you get a positive value, that means they're repelling. So a positive times a positive. If both charges are positive, you get repulsion. If they're both negative, you also get repulsion. If you get a negative value, and that only happens when one charge is negative, the other is positive, that means attraction. Now we finally get to explain why that charged balloon sticks to the wall, even if it's neutral, and how is Coulomb's law involved? Why this thing will stick to a wall? Here's my charged balloon. Notice that the wall is neutral. The wall is neutral. But watch what happens when I bring 
the charge balloon near the wall. Look at what's happening to those electrons. And this appears to be a conducting wall because the electrons are leaving the atoms. You notice how those electrons get farther away from the balloon? This leaves the positive charges closer to the balloon. And just this small difference in distance, it's a 1 over r squared law, makes the positive charges win because they are closer to the balloon. So this attracts. Let this go. That's very strongly attracted to that because this is positively charged. But if I bring it close enough, it, it attracts this thing. Again, even just this small difference in distance, the electron's a little bit farther away from the negatively charged balloon than the positive charges are. The positive charges win because they are closer. So this sticks. Now, it will also stick to even an insulating wall. And let's just demonstrate this. And it will even stick to an insulating wall. Even though the electrons never leave the atoms, that is sticking. You can see that even though I'm pulling it away, it wants to stay with that wall because even though the electrons are still stuck in those atoms in that wall, they're just moving to the other side of the atom, which is enough of a difference of distance to make this thing attract. The positive charges win because they're closer to the balloon. Pretty amazing stuff.